Sam. I've got loads of ideas for combining physical computing and prologue. Um, I got. I want to build some toys and some robots, and I want to monitor my house. And um, I've got some Internet of Things device type devices that I want to monitor. Uh, I can imagine how I can set up like rules and constraints for when devices come on and off. But where do I start? That's great, Anne. Let me show you how to get. Uh, input from an Arduino into Prolog. So I've made a really simple project where we have a potentiometer for analog input and we have a nice satisfying push button that has an LED ring um, that will light up when we press the button as well. This is my wiring diagram. Pin A0 is connected to the pop, pin 2 is connected to the button, pin 4 is connected to the LED. Um, we're using two resistors and I'm no electrical engineer so I don't know if this is super correct but hey it works. So now let's see the actual project. Now here is a picture of the actual project as you can see we've got the button with the LED ring. Hey I see you're using Lego again. Yes it's a great prototyping tool. See when I press the button the light comes on and I can turn the pot. Now, let me show you the code to get the inputs into Prolog. Okay, so now that we've shown the hardware, let's have a quick look at the Arduino code. We've got um, a variable switch state, which we're going to initialize to zero, which is for the button. Then we've got our two, two standard Arduino things, the setup and the loop. In the setup, we're going to set the serial read to be uh, 9600. And we're going to set pin mode 4 as an output, which can be for our LED, and pin mode 2 as an input. For the void loop, we're going to go through it, and the first thing we're going to do is read pin 2 into switch state. Then if it's low, then we're going to write pin 4 low, so this is turning the LED off. And if it's on, then we're going to turn the LED on as well. So we're going to write 4 if it's high. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to print some things to the serial output. So we want to print a prolog term, so we're going to start printing that by putting input in an open bracket. Then in the next line we're going to read the analog um, A0. I'm going to divide that by 4 to give us a value between 0 and 255. And we're going to print that to the serial. Then we're going to print the rest of the term with switch state. So we're going to have a two place term and end with a new line. And we're going to also delay it by a uh, thousand, just so that we can see what is happening. Okay, so if we want to upload that script, we just click upload. And that goes onto our Arduino. And then we can now see the serial monitor. So we're going to click Tools Serial Monitor. And as you can see that we are getting this nice output terms, input 44, 0. So if I press the button, then you'll see that that changes to 1 and if I change the potentiometer then we can see that we can adjust the first value in the term. Okay so now we want to read the serial output on the terminal on your PC. So we're going to use the cat command to do that sometimes the cat command is going to be a bit funny so I'll show you how to get around that so let's just see if we can run it this time and you see we haven't actually had a continuous output we've just read a tiny bit of the term so I'm not really sure what why it does this but the way to get around it is to actually run um, to open the serial port in screen first so And open it in screen and you can see that we get an output like this so we exit screen control a colon quit and now if we go and run cat as well you see that the first term was a bit mangled but now we've got a nice continuous output and we can press the button and adjust the output
OK, so let's look at the prolog code. So the idea of the program is it's going to monitor the serial um, input, and it's going to do that in the background. But we want to be able to query whatever the current value that has been recorded by the serial monitor at any time. So we're going to have a dynamic predicate, current value. And we're going to use cat as we did on the command line, but we're going to put that in a process create. And we're going to use the predicate read lines to read the output of cat. So that's just going to recurse and keep reading all the lines. And to start with, we're just going to write the line to the screen just so you can see what happens. OK, so we've loaded the program. So let's start the reading. As you can see, we have the input from the Arduino appearing on our screen. And we can adjust the potentiometer some different values, just increasing it, press the button, release it, and that's fine. OK, so there's two important things we need to change in our code. The first thing is, I don't know if you noticed, but some of the input was kind of garbled on the screen. And so if we want to actually treat those as prolog terms, then we're going to have to have some sort of uh, exception monitoring for that predicate to make sure that they can actually be read as terms. And the second thing is that the output was taking up our screen, and we don't want that to be the case. We want that to be happening in the background, and we want to be able to just query whatever the current state of the Arduino's inputs are. So. In order to make those changes, we're going to introduce a few other predicates. So we're going to just comment out the right line and recomment um, this catch statement. So we're going to try this. So we're going to, any error that happens in save term is going to be caught, cool, and we're just going to print the error message to the screen. But otherwise, just carry on. And so to actually save the term into our dynamic database, we're going to use this predicate save term. And that's going to take use term to atom. So it's going to take the line and turn it into a term. Now, the next um, slightly interesting thing here is this with mutex. And because we're going to be running this in a thread, we need to make sure that the, the threads are synchronized when we're querying them. So we're going to use with mutex and we're going to retract the current value and assert the new value that we've just read. And we're going to use this with mutex and call this sync as the first argument. So the rest of the code, we've got um, begin, which is going to start the thread. And this is going to put the predicate start. So what we did before is now going to run in a thread in the background. And we're going to call that serial monitor. So now this is going to be running in the background when we click begin rather than start. And then once we're in the code and it's running, we'll just have the normal top level of prologue, which we can query anything we want. And if we want to query the value that the Arduino is sending over, we're going to use this predicate get value. And we're going to use this with mutex again. Um, so that's to make sure that we're not calling this in between the retracting and asserting um, in case, because in between these two lines here, we won't have any value at all. So we're using this with mutex will protect against that. And finally, we we'll just have a stop predicate, which will send the abort signal to serial monitor and return this, the status back when we want to stop reading from the Arduino. So let's save that and have a look at that now running in Prolog. Okay, so we've loaded the new code up, and let's now begin the background thread. So you can see it's just returned serial monitor, and we've gone back to the top level. So now we can query get value, and we can get the the current input, which is two five five and zero. Now we're going to adjust. And we can see that we've now got a new 
input or press the button. And so in this way, we can monitor and query the serial monitor output. So let's stop. And there we are, we've finished. Hey, that's great, Sam. It'll be simple to switch the pot for a light or a temperature sensor. Um, I've got a tutorial on printing messages and exception handling in Prolog, and uh, I'll put a link below for that. Yes, that's a, a good idea. So I can get input from the Arduino into Prolog, but what if I want Prolog to send data back to the Arduino? Good point. Um, I guess we'll have to make another video another time. Okay, viewers, remember to like and subscribe to Playing With Prologue.